welcome back to the section on psychiatry. I will be taking you through the recap of psychotic disorders. So, psychotic disorders as you understand will encompass disorders like schizophrenia wherein a patient will come to you with a lot of hallucinatory delusional phenomena along with a lot of dysfunction. So, the first one off the list is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia has a prevalence of 1% with around 20 million people actively living in this world currently with us with this disease. There is an understanding that you have to make of the onset of uh, the age for this disease. There are two peaks that are seen, one earlier than 25 years and the other one after 35 years of age. So, the usual age of onset can be less than 25 or more than 35 years of age. You have to understand that there are two primary concepts behind the understanding of any psychiatric disorder as is with schizophrenia. The first one being the Kriplanian concept of dementia precox where he described it as a debilitating deteriorating illness which starts early in age and he termed it as dementia precox. The second one is the Bloilerian concept. This one is a better concept because it is based on real time clinical observations and this was based on the historical observations in a subsequent time frame after the patient from the patient's records. So, a Bloilerian concept described gave the term schizophrenia and gave four primary schizophrenic symptoms. The abnormal associations, autistic behavior, abnormal affect and ambivalence. Four A's can be remembered easily in this order. What you have to understand is that a patient with schizophrenia as was observed by Bloiler has abnormality in his association of thoughts and affective uh, responses. Autistic behavior and thinking, the thinking and the actions are very withdrawn from the social structure. There is uh, a concrete way of thinking is there. There is abnormality of affective responses because the responses are either blunted or absent or inappropriate to the expected outcome. And there is a difficulty in making arriving to some conclusion. So, there is ambivalence in decision making. Clinical features of schizophrenia are predominantly of three types, primary the positive symptoms, the negative symptoms and the disorganization symptoms. By positive symptoms you should understand there is something additional that is happening in the form of delusions and hallucinations. And these can be delusions of persecution, delusion of reference, delusion of infidelity, delusion of grandiosity, any kind of a delusional phenomena which is a thought disorder. Then there can be hallucinations. Hallucinations are perceptual disorders in any sensory modality. The most important of the hallucinations that you will understand will be auditory hallucinations in patients with schizophrenia. What those can be? They can be voices talking about the patient, voices commenting on the patient's action. There can be voices uh, which are derogatory and threatening the patient. There can be voices talking about the patient's uh, thoughts in specific. So, a whole lot of hallucinatory phenomena will be seen in patients with schizophrenia. Negative symptoms, you will find that there is a phenomenon of evolution when the patient will not be engaging in activities. There is anhedonia, lack of interest, alogia, the speech output it is reduced or absent. There is blunting of affect, the affective responses of let us say uh, a reactionary sad mood or a feeling of cheerfulness is absent. There is impairment of attention. And then there is a lot of disorganization in thought and affect, right? The patient will not be able to put together his ideas to make a meaningful statement and have a meaningful conversation. And the affective responses are incongruent. When you are required to be smiling, you will not be able to do it. When you are required to be crying, that kind of a response will not be there in this person with schizophrenia. You have to remember that the duration of such symptoms should be at least one month to arrive at a diagnosis of schizophrenia. This is in concordance with the International Classification of Disorders of the World Health Organization. In respect to DSM of the American Psychiatric Association, the duration should be at least 6 months. There are subtypes of schizophrenia that you have to know, predominantly of 6 types. The first one being paranoid schizophrenia. Paranoid schizophrenia is the most common variety, most commonly asked clinical question in psychiatry in this topic. The patients have an onset later than the other subtypes and the patient has a good amount of positive symptoms. By that what you understand, the patient will have a lot of delusions and hallucinations. 
with disorganization. This subtype of schizophrenia has a good prognosis. Which one has the best of these? Keratonic schizophrenia has the best prognosis of all the clinical subtypes of schizophrenia. What is keratonic schizophrenia? This kind of patient will present to you pre with predominant motor dysfunction. The patient will have a lot of rigidity, lack of activity. The patient can be seen to be having abnormal postures. The patient can stand in the sun for hours altogether regardless of the heat and sweat that he will have. The patient will seem to be standing or maintaining abnormal postures. Let, let's say the patient is bent in a specific way. The patient can remain bent forward for multiple uh, periods of time. The patient will also have multiple phenomena like mutism where there will be lack of conversation by the patient. There will be stuporousness that can be seen in patients with catatonia. The patient can also have phenomena like waxy flexibility where you can mold the person into one specific shape and the patient will maintain that shape for infinite amount of time. There are phenomena like Medgehen and Mitmacken wherein the patient will have extreme form of cooperation towards the examiner. You by the touch of a finger, by this amount of effort, you can make that person attain any posture and that will remain maintained for quite a good time. So predominance of motor symptoms with an early onset and a better prognosis defines catatonic schizophrenia. Then there is this entity called as hebiphrenia or disorganized schizophrenia. Here the patient has an insidious onset early in age, usually teenage with affective symptoms. So what this person has? This person has a disorganization in his affective responses. Mirror gazing is what will be seen in the question with a facetious laughter. So an abnormal Laughter at an abnormal uh, situation is what will be seen with shallow affect. The affective responses will lack depth. Phenomena of holding will also be seen here and it has a poor prognosis. The next one is simple schizophrenia. Here the patient has an early onset of symptoms and it is a slowly progressive deteriorating kind of a picture. It has a poor prognosis. The next one is undifferentiated type as the name suggests when you are not able to classify some patient with schizophrenia into any specific subtype that is what is called as undifferentiated type of schizophrenia. Residual type of schizophrenia here once the patient is evolving or emerging from the disease getting treated even then there is continuous evidence of schizophrenic disturbances in the absence of predominant affective or psychotic symptoms. So that kind of an absence of active symptoms with continuous disturbance that continues to persist for years altogether is termed as a residual subtype of schizophrenia.